Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. This is Tony Hager, and welcome to Global Wrestling News. Let's kick this thing off in Bloomington, Indiana, home of the Hoosers and the Big Ten title race. Before we give our perspective, let's hear what the athletes and coaches had to say about the toughest tournament in all of college wrestling. How much do you think competing in the Big Ten helps you guys for the national tournament? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's the steel sharp and steel mentality when you're when, especially the way we compete, we're competing on a Friday, Sunday, and then we're, uh, we're usually traveling home Monday, and then we have another match on Friday. So and you, you do that for several weeks, and um, yeah, you have to just you know suck it up and, and get tough, and, and realize that that's what you want. You want to compete, and, and not only that, but you're competing against very good teams. So you know, I think uh, I think that's I think that's great. You know, it's great to be a part of, and uh, you know, history shows that you know the Big Ten Conference does very well, especially as of late, and uh, so, you know, we're, we're, we wouldn't want to be anywhere else in any other conference. Um, no no tournament in the country other than the Big Ten tournament really simulates um, the, the physical and mental grind of the national tournament, and I feel like it does a great job of simulating that, and even the guys who don't do as well as they want here, um, in a couple weeks they can, they can, you know, achieve greatness there on that stage. So I think just, you know, for me, it's really helped me. Um, Realize that you know I need to get better if I want to be at the top of this conference. And then if you're on the top of this conference, most most more times than not, you're going to be at the top of the country. So, what are the fans that are going to be coming here? What what sort of tournament are they? Uh, what's going to be in store for them when they get here? Well, they'll see the who's who of wrestling within the NCAA championships, as well as you know even guys that are going to down the line be world team members, Olympic team members. I mean, for example, Kyle Snyder, who's already a world and Olympic mm. champion, is the heavyweight for Ohio State. So. Um, I mean, they're going to see not just the best wrestlers of the country, but a number of the best wrestlers in the world, both now and in the future. Uh, team race is certainly important. We want uh, a good team result, and that starts with individual results. And we got a 25-pounder that starts things off right. We got five guys in the top three seeds. After that, we got you know a smorgasbord, and we got to get ready to wrestle every match one at a time. Nothing's really changed, uh, you know, from every other week that we talk about get ready to wrestle your match and do what you do best and you know we've made progress we've made progress and now our best wrestling has to show up i haven't won um big 10 title you know uh i don't know i don't really think about that too much um we can think about that after after i win a title uh, i just got to take it one point at a time one one match at a time and when i do that um everything else will fall into place I'll take Penn State, Tony. You've got the field, I suppose. Um, I mean, I'm, I'll take it. I mean, Penn State, obviously a clear favorite in here, but Nick Suriano, he's hurt. More than likely, he'll go out in the match to fault out. So those are going to be some big bonus, bonus points that uh, Penn State's not going to have. So you know, Iowa, Ohio State, they got a shot here without Suriano. Penn State has an athlete seated at every single weight. Only one other team can say that, Tony. You would think it would be Iowa, Ohio State, but it's actually Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin, they've had a great year. They've been, uh, you know, successfully. The, the dual tournaments, individual-wise, have been able to compete, but team-wise, they haven't. So I think they've been kind of silent but deadly. So Wisconsin definitely uh, has a shot to make some noise and get some kids into the NCAA tournament. Tony, will injuries be a factor? Penn State says Suriano is going to be day-to-day. -day. Corey Clark, is he healthy? Ohio Ohio State is dealing with some injuries as well. Well, I mean, Corey Clark, We when I first heard about this injury, I thought he was going to be done for the year. So it's always a question mark to see where he's going to be at. Is his, is his shoulder healthy enough to be able to – take out those outside single shots that he's so deadly with. So that's definitely going to be that the topic of the tournament. Is Corey Clark uh, healthy? I think he is. I think he's going to go in and possibly upset uh, Nathan Tomasello at 133 pounds. So that's, wow. if he's 100% healthy, I think he gets it done. Well, we'll see, right? We'll talk more about the conference championships when we return. You're watching GWN. Thanks to our friends at Adidas Wrestling. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. 
Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Well, with the conference championships this weekend, you can bet big time matches will take place early and often and in the finals. Let's take a look at our top five to watch. First, we head to the EIWA in a rematch from earlier in the year. It's Cornell's Brian Rilabuto, who should take on Ryan Preish of Lehigh in the 174-pound finals. Rilabuto pinned Preish earlier in the year, but it was closer than the box score led us on. Yeah, I mean, th these two put up some big points early uh, in their match. Real boots hook really kind of caught them a little bit. They were rolling through and uh, got essentially a defensive fall, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, the, the fans are hungry for this match because Real Buto, he's really underrated. I think uh, this is a guy that has some big wins on the year. His only loss is to Valencia. Uh, we all know he's obviously bursted onto the scenes with big Pac-12 wins. So Real Buto really is kind of, a, I want to say an underdog, but he's number two. He's ranked number two, but no one ever really is talking about this kid. I like Preach. I mean, he was, he was in the first match and he Keep the matches close. Feel like you might get down a, to a late takedown to pick up the EIWA title. My opinion, my opinion only. Of course, I'm a Cornell fan as well. I'm just going to stick on the fence. I think so. Sticking with 174 pounds, but now the Big Ten Championships. We could see a top five battle between Bo Jordan of Ohio State versus Mark Hall from Penn State. Are people still in shock that they pulled Hall's red shirt? I mean, I think people are, are shocked by seeing it, but right. Sanderson obviously has won multiple titles at Penn State, so he obviously knows what he's got. He knows what, what uh, Hall is capable of doing. When he went up into Carver Hawkeye Arena, lost to Alex Meyer, I think that shocked a lot of people and realized that maybe Mark Hall isn't the best that you know has walked on the earth as far as college wrestlers go. He was the number one recruit for a reason, so I think that you know some of the jitters are out. Big Ten title, big, big, big stage. Mark Hall comes up with the title. I think it's a tale of two different styles. Personally, I feel that Jordan can keep things close, and Hall, well, he can put up points. I'm picking Hall. Yeah, I mean, Jordan wins this if he can get to his shots early. If he can get that first takedown, you know, maybe uh, you know Hall will kind of not get on the aggressive side and be kind of tame on things. But it just it's going to come down to that Jordan getting that first takedown. If he doesn't get it, Hall's going to win. Not a whole lot of great big-time bouts within the Big 12, but one we should see in the Big 12 finals, Seth Gross of South Dakota State versus Oklahoma State's K. Brock. Gross beat Brock earlier in the year. Can he get it done again? I don't think so. I mean, Gross is just so dirty from all positions unbelievably hard to score on so I think you know Brock's gonna be able to get into his shots but Gross is gonna be able to outfunk it he's gonna have he's got better mat wrestling so I see Gross picking up a title here I think it's a big time bout and I think Brock steps up and finds some clean open shots for his first big 12 title hey Gross is gonna be hungry this is a Brock and Gross they're in an interesting position here I think uh, you know with Tomasella I, I picked an upset with Clark in the finals there so Number one seed, number two seed in the NCAA championships are up for grabs. I think uh, this is a big-time match. I, again, I feel like Tomasello might go down. If that's an opportunity, Gross could uh, pick up uh, the number one seed. You know what? I think you're literally insane with some of the predictions you make. You have been on point this year, and I'm going to give you some credit, but picking Tomasello to go down won't happen. Anyway, let's move on to the biggest matchups of the weekend. We thought we had a rivalry brewing after the Midlands Championships when we saw the fireworks at 57 pounds between Iowa's Michael Kemmerer and Nebraska's Tyler Berger. Then Kemmerer controls their highly anticipated rematch with a 3-2 victory with the only takedown, by the way. Was he in control, or do you think Berger can find an opening? Well, I've rewatched both matches from Midlands and the duel. You know, Berger, you know, he, he can beat Kemmer from his feet. I mean, uh, it, but he's he has to be able to pull the trigger. Kemmerer is just, he's so hard to take down. He likes to keep matches 
matches close, but I think uh, I think Kemmer's got better technique overall. I think uh, this is he's going to put a lid on this one. I think he's going to put a lid on the rivalry, and we're going to be done. He'll be uh, 3-0 going into NCAA championships against Tyler. <laughs> Our final matchup to watch is at 149 pounds. That'll be at the Big Tens prior to the Penn State versus Iowa duel. This probably wasn't going to be our top match to watch today, but Sorensen made me a believer that Rutherford could lose. Heck, I feel like gave a lot of us hope. He's been the most dominant wrestler at this weight class up to this point. Can Sorensen get it done? You're a little closer than I am to the project. Well, I... I... I'll admit, I didn't see Sorensen putting that match together when, when uh, Penn State came to town. I just didn't think that he'd be able to keep it close. He just hasn't been able to pull that trigger. Sorensen is just kind of a guy that you believe that can get it done, but just hasn't been able to do it. And Rutherford is a guy that you always know is going to get it done. He's going to put up big points. Right. And I think uh, Rutherford, he's, he's a smarter wrestler. I feel like he's going to learn from what Sorensen's attacks were, and he's going to come back, and he's going to, I don't want to say dominate, but he's going to control this match against Sorensen. All right, next up, the always outspoken Wade Chalice joins the show. Stay tuned. You're watching GWN, powered by McBride Max. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. All right, welcome back to Global Wrestling News. As we take a closer look at the conference and national finals, we welcome a very important figure in our sport. He's the inventor of the spladle, the man with the most wins and the most pins in the Guinness World Book of Records. Wade Chalice joins us. Wade, welcome to the show. How are you? Good morning, Scott. I'm doing well. Before we get to talk about the NCAAs, I would like to ask you what effect the, the major conference uh, championships are going to have, whether it's the PAC, the the MAC, the Big Ten, the Big 12, or the other conferences, what, what effect will these have for our listeners? What effect will they have on the NCAA championships? Well, most of the conference championships, I don't mean to diminish some of them, the ACC, PAC, Big 12, and so on, but there only is one conference that's going to make a difference when it comes to seeding, when it comes to the actual uh, outcome of the NCAA championships, and that's the Big Ten. You know, the Big Ten in several of the weight classes, the top four seeds will be the top four seeds at the NCAA championships. They're that deep, they're that deep and dominant. I mean, you know, the seeds make a big difference in the conference outcomes will determine a lot of, in a lot of cases, how the NCAA committee looks at the different weight classes and individuals and where they're going to place them. We look at... We look at, um, you know, some patterns, the Gable years, and we saw uh, a couple years under Joe Say with Oklahoma State in between there. Uh, Arizona State and Iowa State both took up 187 and 88. So we're seeing a, a kind of a new era here as the East 
from Penn State on east, we're starting to see some great wrestling coming out of the east. Well, you know, that is that would have been always the case. Um, uh, the east had a, you know, I, I don't think it's going to change much anytime soon. Uh, the the a majority of the great the top five recruiting states in America uh, are basically four of the five are located on the east coast, and they all border on each other: New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. You know, those four states are clearly the dominant factor in the NCAA championships. You know, Ohio State could have done what they what they're doing currently 20 years ago, 30 years ago, uh, but for various reasons they didn't because they, you know, if they just keep the kids from Ohio in state, you know, Penn State or Ohio State's going to be pretty competitive. Same thing's true with Penn State. Same thing's true with New Jersey and uh, New York. Um, I, it, I don't see it changing. Uh, you know, um, you know. With Kate, with Sanderson there, you know I don't see Penn State not being the champ, or certainly their worst year they'll be third, you know, in the next ten years as long as Kale wants to be there, and I think most schools would just be hoping to stay close to to Penn State. Talk to us about bonus points and the difference makers uh, for Kale Sanderson and his Nittany Lions. Well, he, he you know he's chosen well as assistant coach. Casey Cunningham is a pinner. He wrestled with my son at uh, Central Michigan, and I know Casey really well. And he he loves back points, and he doesn't you know he's open style. Uh, Kale you know was is supportive of that as well. Um, I don't know if they necessarily they go out and recruit that, but that's what I would be doing if I was a college coach. And I've written on numerous occasions in my blog about about this exact item. Penn State has not in the last you know five championships out of six years has not had more NCAA champs than, say, Iowa or, or Oklahoma State. They haven't had more All-Americans than the top two or three teams. But what they did have is you know 20 to 30 more bonus points than any other team. I, I, I can't see them not winning again in St. Louis in a couple weeks just because of that. They're going to have just the same number of t- titles as Oklahoma Staters or Iowans and Ohio State, but the, 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 the bonus points are just crushing the competition. Wade Chalice has been our guest. He is absolutely one of my favorite people, and I'm proud to call him a friend. He is brave in his opinions, and he's generally right. Are, are we not talking about the, the upcoming matches? Geez, Scott. I mean, you know, like, you know, the matches that are going to be the sure bets. Sure. Give me your top two sure bet matches. Uh, I uh, Well, sure bet to win, uh, Nolf, Imar, and Snyder. The safe bets to win, not sure, but safe bets, are uh, Tomasello and Cox. Uh, the, I'm sorry? Nobody from Cornell is on your list. Uh, that is correct, because I have that down as the most anticipated bout of the tournament at any weight class. Because the number one and number two Hodge Award winning candidates right now are happen to be at 184, and Dean is the man. He's coming back to defend his title. He has had a tremendous year, Has it leads the country in pins. I mean, he is a beast. But in the last year, a guy named Nickel from Penn State has matured a great deal. He was in the finals last year and lost, in an, I think, an upset to Martin. Uh, but it, it is what it is. Uh, but he has really come on this year. And I was, I was going with Dean all year long. And after I watched his last match, uh, the match that I saw last, uh, where he uh, – thumped uh, uh, Boyd from uh, Oklahoma State, um, you know, I said, this is going to be a match. And, I, you know, I'm not sure he's going to win that now. I think, I think I'm leading, you know, uh, uh, one fraction of a point toward nickel on, on who's going to win it. But that's, that's just going to be get your hot dog ahead of time, your popcorn, your Coke, get your butt in the seat, don't move leading up to that match because it's going to be a, the, the, I think it's going to be the match, the highlight of the tournament. We'll look forward to seeing you fans. Wade, it's always good to talk with you. Best to your beautiful wife. She's always so sweet and helpful. God bless her, and we're looking forward to seeing you in St. Louis. Thank you, Scott. Quick Hits is coming up next. You're watching GWN. Thanks to Barbarian Apparel. Yeah, these guys. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. 
the warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so defend what you have built. When looking for a quality pizza, you need a place that makes everything from scratch, using fresh ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. And if you can grab a lotto ticket while you're there, well, lucky you. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. When Arizona State hired Zeke Jones, the wrestling world took notice. Transfers and recruits came flocking to ASU, and in just three years, they picked up their first Pac-12 title in 11 years. Is this just the beginning for Zeke Jones? I mean, Jones has some big supporters. In today's game, you absolutely have to have. They have to have the administrators, and you got to have the money. you got to have guys. the big, big supporters that come back. He's got that. So West Coast teams have got to be just squirming in their seat. Obviously, when he got hired, they knew this was going to happen. And uh, it's, it's Arizona State is just so attractive. I mean, they're gonna. I think they're gonna start dipping into the PA guys, Ohio. Now that uh, they, you know, are coming up with this Pac-12 championship, and they're gonna make some noise at uh, NCAA's. Won't be up in the top five, but they're gonna they're gonna come home way with some national champs and some All-Americans. Remember, Arizona State has already won a national title. They've won Pac-12 titles. They have improved and improved and improved. The future looks bright. I'd go to school there because pretty girls. <laughs> well, I mean, there, there is some history there, but it's not as, you know, it's not as rich history as maybe Iowa State or some other school. So yeah, I think, I feel like he's got, he had more work to do with their recruits. Maybe not Arizona State supporters, but recruits from across the country. Arizona State hasn't been anywhere um, as far as a team race for a while. So their history is there, but Zeke Jones is definitely bringing them back to 2017. In the, the today's world with these kids can see it on their social media, see it on their phones. Arizona State's where it, the place to be. All right, so one of the topics that's uh, hitting the media, it's a pretty controversial one. A transgender teen who identifies as a boy, Mac Beggs, won a Texas State girls wrestling title this last weekend. The reason why there is some criticism is that he's taking testosterone as he transitions from female to male. Do you feel that this gives him an unfair advantage? It's for sure an unfair advantage. I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, she, she taking testosterone, become a he, you know, that just, uh, and going against the girls is unfair. But the the thing that people aren't recognizing is in that Beggs wanted to wrestle the boys, but due to Texas State policy, he was not able to do that. So, he, obviously, he wants to compete, so he's going to compete against the girls. So that's where I think we have the issue with the whole testosterone thing. they got to go by that birth certificate. Um, it is. It, that's what it's about, really. You are supposed to wrestle with, uh, with what is put on your birth certificate when you were born. Yeah, it, that's okay. that's just the the policies that we have in place with everything we have along the country. I feel like the you know these states now need to have some kind of a policy in there uh, to where you know if this comes up again, so we don't have this huge public display and it just it, it ends up being bad for Mac because you know again he didn't want he didn't want this. He wanted to wrestle against the against the boys. All right, we have girls competing against boys already, but what if boys want to compete with girls? Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's where the the fine line is. I mean you're you're kind of pulling your hair out. So what is the right way? I, I don't feel like that's fair too. I mean, um, are they if the boys are taking estrogen to transition into a girl? It's just a it's a touchy subject, and I, I feel like states have to come away. Maybe a higher power has to come away with the actual <laughs> way that this needs to be uh, on paper. Switching it up. Recruiting news never ends in our sport, and the Ohio State Buckeyes have landed two-time Colorado State champ Malik Heinzelman. Heinzelman has three Fargo titles and won UWW Cadet National titles the last two years. Yeah, I mean, Coach Ryan, he's clearly interested in picking up kids that have freestyle experience. They've got those credentials. 
credentials. Uh, Heiselman, he, he's a class of 2018. He's a 106 pounder, top wrestler in the country at this weight class. He's got some, you got to put on a little weight. He's got to grow a lot, but uh, I feel like, you know, Tom Ryan knows what the heck he's doing. He feels like there's a plan for him and he's got plenty of time. He'll definitely red shirt so he can fit into 125 pounds here in three, four years. Ryan teased to the Buckeye Nation that there was more coming too. So keep your eyes open, keep your eyes peeled for more news out of the Ohio Buckeye State. Hey, we're out of time for the week. Don't forget, we will be in Indiana this weekend providing free hold-by-hold -hold audio from the Big Ten Championships. You can listen at TakedownWrestle.com. For everybody here at Global Wrestling News, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.